Greetings, neighbors, as we come to you from Granger United Methodist Church. I'm Bruce Hartley, the pastor of this hope-filled and faithful congregation. We gather this day on Memorial Sunday. Memorial Day weekend, this is the Sunday of that weekend in which the people of Granger United Methodist Church acknowledge all those who have sacrificed their lives um, and their loved ones for the sake of the freedom of this country. We acknowledge three of those individuals who have passed into the church triumphant on this Memorial Sunday a little later in the service as we come to the prayer concerns. But we gather. We gather to honor God. We gather to pray. There is a, a solemnness about this weekend every year. But on this particular Memorial Day Sunday, it is with a deeper solemn spirit and heart that we gather because of the, of the shootings this week in Uvalde, Texas the deaths of teachers, students, the injuries that have come about that some are still being treated for, and the mental anguish that is not only among those families, but all those who have been affected by mass shootings in recent years. And so as we gather in this time of worship, let us remember not only today, but throughout the week and days to come, the anguish of many. There are families and there are friends who are anguished by the loss, not only the loss that comes from war, but the loss that comes from senseless shootings and the disrespect of life. We know we know that we are not alone. We believe that we are surrounded by the saints, those who have gone before us into the church triumphant. We believe that we are forever remembered by God Almighty. And may we remember that God's love is stronger and violence and death. Easter, the season we still find ourselves in, Easter is a reminder that the risen Lord has conquered death. And we know, we believe as God's followers, Christ's followers, that evil will not rule. And so, we gather to remember and we gather to be drawn into the living spirit of God to lead us through these times in which we live. Let's join our voices on this Memorial Weekend Sunday.
as a part of our opening conversation today, I wanted to ask a few questions. Where does a flashlight get its power? Well, it comes from batteries. It comes from batteries. And I am grateful to my spouse who reminds me periodically, have you checked the batteries in the flashlights in case the power gets knocked out of the house? Thank you, my dear lovely wife. Where does a car get its power? If you say gasoline, in part, yes. Because we are living in a world in which that is changing dramatically with the invention and the innovation and the growing trend of electric cars. So gasoline and electric is where cars get their power. Where does an elephant get its power to pull such heavy loads? Well, food, and they eat lots of it. Where does a bicycle get its power to, to roll down sidewalks? And have you ever watched those cyclists that climb those mountains in the Tour de France? Where does a bicycle get its power? Well, it comes from people in part, although I'm seeing more and more electric bikes out there myself. So again, electricity and people power bicycles. Power is to, to operate. Power to, to function is derived by something outside ourselves. Where, therefore, do people get power? And specifically, where do followers of Christ get power to follow the risen Lord into the world for the purpose of transforming the world? Where do we as followers of Christ get our power to serve God in a world that seems to be well, it seems like as followers of Christ, we are swimming upstream more days than not. Well, that's the question that I hope to answer as we continue our, our God talks on you will be my witness. And so I hope that you will follow along. And if you haven't caught the first few God talks, well, you might go back and check a few others. But today, our focus in our God talks, you will be my witness. Well, it's about power. Finding the power to be that witness. So, let us hear the Holy Scripture. The scripture comes again this week from the Acts of the Apostles. And we turn to the first chapter of Acts. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. 
he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, he was eating with them. He gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when he met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of, to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. May God bless the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. We gather now to connect with one another as the body of Christ and to be connected to the presence of the Almighty in this time of worship. I share with you these prayer concerns that have been made known to us. For those of you that listen, you may share your concerns, your joys, by emailing office at grangerumc.org. And we will share those in future videos of our worship services and also share with the email that we send out to our for our pray at home email list granger office at grangerumc.org we want to begin our prayer concerns by remembering those from Granger United Methodist Church, who have passed into the church triumphant this year. We pray for the family of Bernie Arnold. We pray for the family and those who were a part of congregations where Pastor Merle Gephardt served as the pastor over 40 plus years. We also pray for the family of Robert Simmons. These have passed into the church triumphant and we hold their families close as we lift them into the presence of God. In addition to these prayer concerns, we continue to pray for Sebastian Kunkler, Harold Simmons, Val Ewing, the Andrew DeMesa family, Dee Stewart, David Duke, Laura Beth Duncan, Sylvia, Rita Clyburn, Corbin Taylor, Michael Lewis and his, excuse me, Michael Lawson, Michael Lawson and his family living in Austria, far too close to the war. We pray for Carolyn Cernick, 
Wayne Rice. Walter Starcher's neighbor, Jim, who is recovering from an intense surgery. We're prayerful for the congregation and the community of Coshocton, the congregation of Grace United Methodist Church in Coshocton was struck by lightning recently and experienced severe fire damage. We pray for the spirit of the people called Grace United Methodist Church to prevail and to continue the mission of Christ, to serve as a witness in their community to their risen Lord. We are also mindful of a young mother by the name of Chelsea, who was recently diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. She is the mother of four, and we lift Chelsea in our prayers. We include Richard Castle in our prayers. We want to be mindful of the ongoing shortage for baby formula. There are many that find this to be most distressing, and we pray for those shipments from around the world to make it to the United States and for production to begin anew. We also gather to remember, continue to remember the people of Buffalo in the weeks that have followed that tragic hate crime, the deaths that have occurred there. And in this past week, the deaths that have occurred in Uvalde, Texas, for the teachers, their spouses, their children, their parents, and for the young people whose lives came to a tragic end. We pray for their parents, their siblings, their grandparents, for all those who are feeling that loss. We lift them into the arms of the Almighty for comfort, for peace, for strength. May God rest God's healing hand upon all who have been affected by this tragedy. In the midst of this news this past week, we also want to be mindful of high school and college students who are graduating high school students that are going off to serve their country or to learn vocations, going off to college, going into the workforce. May God be their guide as they begin this new phase, this new season of their life. And the college students who are uh, heading into adulthood, we rejoice with their accomplishments and we pray for their contributions to the world. These are the concerns, these are the joys that I bring before you this day. And again, knowing that you come with your concerns and your joys, and I remind you to contact office at grangerumc.org if you wish to share those those concerns, and those joys with the people called Granger United Methodist Church. And so, as the body of Christ, we pause in this time to remember and to seek God's guidance in the midst of all that unfolds, let us pray. Eternal and everlasting God, you are the Lord of life. 
And on this day of remembrance, we gather to give you thanks for the lives of people whose passing reveals to us the value of this life you have granted. As we recall their lives, teach us to number our days that we may use wisely the treasure of time given to each of us. Let us remember those who, like our Lord Jesus, willingly gave their lives for the sake of others. Firefighters who braved the terrors of flame. Peace officers slain in the line of duty. Soldiers and sailors and flyers who sacrificed their futures for our freedom. Ordinary citizens who instinctively reacted with heroism in a crisis. Martyrs who valued truth and, and justice above life itself. Grant us a measure of their passionate dedication to life. That we may face our challenges with courage and resolve. Let us pause in sober remembrance of those who died too soon, with so much living yet undone, the victims of disease, the casualties of careless accidents, the victims of crime, those who by their own hand ended a life they could no longer bear. Lord, teach us to number our days that we may fully appreciate the time we have. Let us remember thankfully those who just by their being showed us the power of faith, hope, and love for mentors and teachers, for grandparents, aunts, uncles, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, faithful friends, and lifelong companions. Reach through the emptiness left by their passing to draw us more closely to you and to treasure the moments we spent with them. Teach us to number our days so that we do not fuss over unimportant matters or delay expressing our love and respect. Grant us strength to honor the memory of our loved ones by living each day remaining to us with courage and compassionate service to others. Grant us grace to entrust our loved ones to your undying love until that day when all hearts are mended, all families united, all lives restored. We pray in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In our opening conversation today, we talked about power, batteries, power, flashlights. People can be a source of power for bicycles. Gasoline and electricity are the power for automobiles. But we've been talking about being a witness to the risen Lord and I left you with a question just a short period, of, a short time ago. Where do people get their power? That is, the power to follow the risen Christ into the world, to be about the transformation of the world, to carry on the mission and the ministry of Jesus Christ. Where do we get the power as Christ followers? to be that much for God. Jesus, as you heard the scripture read just a short time ago, Jesus promises us, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So the power we need, in short, right off the beginning, so that you're not waiting in any kind of suspense, the power we need as Christ followers to live an Easter lifestyle comes from outside ourselves. It comes from God's self in the form of the Holy Spirit. Now, we are a people. Humanity, humanity are a people who want power. We desire, we desire to be in control of our lives. And often we desire to be in control of the lives of other people around us. We want the positions of prestige and leadership we believe that the strong and the mighty will prevail. Success is often measured by how much power is accumulated or how many people or departments are under us. We want power and we enjoy power. Oh, how we enjoy power. And I would go so far as to say that we live in a world that worships power. We see this love manifested in, in business enterprises and political organizations and international politics. Isn't what's going on in the Ukraine about power? Putin, yes, exercising his power. Ah, the love of power can even become evident in the church. There can be some confusion about power in the church. As Christians, we, we are promised power, but it is not the power the world longs to hold and nor is it the sometimes the the world's perspective of power that has an influence in the life of the church whether it's the united methodist church or granger united methodist church or any congregation for that matter there are power struggles that can happen in the body of christ but we're not to use the power God has given us as followers of Christ for the purpose of, of lording over others. We are given power 
to be witnesses, to be servants of the Christ. And Christ himself set the example for us to live as witnesses, as servants, to live as a witness for Christ is to make ourselves, to make ourselves vulnerable to the ridicule of the world. You see, the world often sees our actions, that is, our meaning followers of Christ, our actions as being ones of weakness. As we practice forgiveness, as we practice self-denial, we, we go against the popular image of what it is to be powerful. But in the face of the world's views, we are able to live as a witness for Christ because we have been granted the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. The scripture before us from Acts takes us beyond Easter Day and challenges us to live an Easter lifestyle, to continue the witness of Christ in our world. And so it is in verse 8 that we read, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We receive power when the Holy Spirit comes for the purpose not to lord over people, not to call all the shots, not to make the rules everyone else must live by, but rather the power we receive is to enable us to be witnesses for Christ, drawing others to Christ, and thus drawing others to eternal life. All we have witnessed through the Acts of the Apostles during those last several weeks transpired through the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, if you remember, it was not Peter who transformed Cornelius. It was the Holy Spirit working in Peter. It was not Paul who transformed Lydia. It was the Holy Spirit working in and through Paul. It is not up to the individual believer to muster up the power to be the kind of witness that transforms the world. The Holy Spirit enables the believer to, to bring an effective witness of the risen Christ to other individuals and thus to the world. This is what I have learned through my, my 30 plus years in ministry that when the Spirit of God is absent from the ministry of a congregation or the congregation is trying to force some ministry or some program against the leading of the Holy Spirit. Well, friends, there is not enough power on earth, political, financial, or anything else to make something happen which God is not for. But... But when the Holy Spirit is present, empowering God's people, there is nothing that can stop God's people powered by the Holy Spirit. And for this power, for this power, we are called to wait. The coming of the Holy Spirit is something only God knows and only God can direct. We are challenged to simply, <laughs> yeah, that's so simple, isn't it? To wait. We are challenged to wait. And there's nothing simple about waiting. I will be among the first to tell you that. We do not know 
when it will come. We are promised it will come. We are promised the presence of the Holy Spirit. And God knows when that timing is right. God promised it. And from my experience and from my understanding of the scriptures, God has yet to renege on a promise. So when we open ourselves to the Holy Spirit, we are opening ourselves to share God's limitless power. We are accepting the challenge to be a witness for Christ. We are partnering with God for the transformation of the world, which, which seems on certain days to be and weeks to be impossible that we could overcome that. But with God's power, we can, we can overcome that and transform the world. Where, where does a flashlight get its power? From batteries. Where do cars get their power? From gasoline and electricity. Where do elephants get their power to pull heavy loads? Well, from the food that they eat. Where does a bicycle get its power to, to, to climb hills? And long stretches from people. And where do Easter people get their power to face the powers and the principalities of this world? In other words, where do Easter people get the power to face evil, injustice, and oppression? The Holy Spirit. Where do people get their power to love the least and the last and the lost. The Holy Spirit. Where will the United Methodist Church get the power to be united once again? The Holy Spirit. And where does Granger United Methodist Church get her power to nurture children and youth and adults in the faith? The Holy Spirit. Where will Granger United Methodist Church get her power to address the challenges that have besieged this congregation for the last several decades so as to focus on the challenges and the needs of our neighbors? Where will this congregation get its power to reconcile within itself and with the neighborhood around us? Only, only, the Holy Spirit can work that power in us. Where will Granger United Methodist Church get the power to forgive, to reconcile, and to heal? Come, Holy Spirit, come. Next week, as we conclude our God talks on You Will Be My Witness, we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, the coming, the arrival of the Holy Spirit, the birthday of the church, where we invite and we welcome the Holy Spirit.
to be the driving force in the lives of followers of Christ, in the lives of the church again, for the renewal of the transformation of the world. Next Sunday, on Pentecost Sunday, we will be breaking bread together, at least in this service brought to you by Granger United Methodist Church. We will be celebrating a means of grace which has the power to bring about forgiveness, healing, and reconciliation. You can join us in person at 9.30 here in the sanctuary. You can join us online by providing your own elements to celebrate the breaking of the bread on the birthday of the church. All are welcome to the Lord's table. We saw in the scriptures over the last several weeks how Peter and Paul and others, Lydia uh, and, and, and others, um, responded to the presence of God. They, they came to understand in a heartfelt way God's love. And they understood that, that God loved and God gave. And as a result, they understood that their love for God resulted in their giving. And so may it be in our lives as we experience the love of Christ, the risen Lord. May we be that presence to reach out into our neighborhoods with that same love and grace, and may God empower our gifts for the transformation of the world. And so you can go on our website and, and share your offering through our website. You may send it directly to the church. We thank you for your generosity. We thank you for your response to God's love. And we praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen.
Oh, indeed, may the spirit of the living God fall afresh on us and guide us to be the witness that the risen Lord has challenged us to be. And so, dear friends, as we go forth into this holiday weekend, as we go forth into the world, take courage. Take courage and faith forward with you into the week ahead. Take courage and joy with you into the world, wherever you may travel. Take courage and love with you and go forth with Christ's light and life as the beacon of new life and hope for all the world. Go in peace. Amen. Weekly Church Announcements for May 29th, 2022. Please visit our website at www.grangerumc.org. We have a new pop-up window that comes up on our webpage, and you can interact with us immediately. You can have a live chat with us, schedule a meeting with the pastor, sign up for our weekly videos and bulletins, plus other options. Please visit out today, try it out, tell us how you like it. You are cordially invited to the reception and worship on July 3rd, Sunday, 9.30 a.m., introducing Pastor Wendy Brown. Everyone is welcome. Cake and punch reception immediately following service. Lifting every parent who lost their child in Uvalde, Texas, and every child who lost their friend Dear Lord, as a parent, I can't imagine the pain. Please surround the parents, siblings, families, friends, and touch them with peace, healing, love, and bring an end to these heart-wrenching, senseless acts. I'm lifting and holding every parent in my prayers, and there they will stay. May God's peace, love, and healing bring comfort to your soul today, tomorrow, for always. I am so saddened for your loss, and I pray for you and yours. Amen. A huge thank you to the 4-H Renegades group that meets at Granger UMC. On May 13th, they cleaned and weeded our flower beds. They did a fabulous job. Thank you again. Thank you for continuing to provide snacks that we take to the Highland Library. We will gratefully accept any snacks at the church office or in the basket on Sunday. Please contribute to our macaroni and cheese food drive throughout all of April and May. Drop your donations off at our basket during Sunday service or during office hours. This will benefit Feeding Medina County. Pastor Bruce Hartley and his wife Janet have spent the last five years at Granger UMC. He is being reassigned to Hudson United Methodist Church at the end of June 2022. In lieu of an exiting reception, the Hartleys have asked that we come together as a community and serve others in need by donating to feed feeding Medina County in their honor. The whole month of June 2022, please bring food, toiletries, cash donations to benefit feeding Medina County. We thank you for your support. 
Flowers beautify the sacred space of our church and are a gift to God and those who attend our worship services, either online or in person. The cost of flowers for our altar is funded through generous donations and not through a line item in our church budget. A contribution to the altar flowers is a meaningful way to honor someone special or remembered loved one. Please call, call the church office at 330-239-2396 to reserve any dates for altar flowers. Or you can go to our link and sign up digitally. Attached is the timeline for the Granger Township Bicentennial Weekend Timeline. What kind of cross or crucifix do you have in your home? Would you like to be part of our service by sharing your pictures? Contact our office. Join us by saving and collecting your pop tabs with our local Boy Scouts to benefit Ronald McDonald House of Akron. Please bring them into the church and leave them by the offertory basket. Twenty. 22 church envelopes are located at the back of the church. If you would like us to mail or drop off your envelopes, please call the office. Wondering how you can help the people of Ukraine? Gifts to support the people of, U of Ukraine can be made in the following ways. Online at umcmissions.org toll-free telephone 888-252-6174 by check with the note advance 982450-Ukraine written on the memo line and mailed an address to the Global Ministries or through any and you can be mailed that to any United Methodist Church. 100% of all advanced contributions go to the designated cause. To hear our latest sermon via telephone, please call 330-222 dash 3264.